Hi there, welcome to QA Box and this new series about mastering XPath for UI automation testing. All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about absolute and relative XPath. So in case of absolute XPath, the XPath expression is created using the selection from the root node. And our root node is HTML, right? So we are going to say forward slash because absolute XPath starts with a single slash right so we are going to say html and then we traverse this from the root to reach the desired element the biggest advantage of using this approach is that it's really uh, quick how the biggest disadvantage is that if developer adds any additional control in between this path then you'll not be able to identify control so for example let's say this is the x path and tomorrow developer wraps this field set input inside a div so then this will become html body div then field set then input and then it will fail okay then what is the solution the solution is go for relative xpath though it's it's comparatively slower than the absolute xpath but you'll be able to find out the element with which you want to interact so in case of relative xpath xpath expression is generated from anywhere within the dom structure right it is not necessary to start from the root now it is represented by a double slash right and double slash denote the current node so wherever you are right that becomes your context node and you're going to identify the element from the context node now in xpath you can go forward and you can also go back which is the limitation of css in css you can always go forward right so going back is called as reverse lookup so that is possible into xpath that's the advantage of xpath all right it is more uh, relative xpath is more compact easy to use and less prone to be being broken because here you could see that we are not starting from html body field set we are not mentioning anything of that sort here we are all saying is hey in the whole dom look out for an element which has got the tag input then we have these square brackets and we are using this ampersand we use for attribute right i mentioned that in the xpath introduction video and then this is the name of the attribute and this is the value of that attribute right plain and simple so we are not talking about from where you have to start traversing so he's saying in the dom find me this element okay so a couple of points before we actually uh, jump on to the practical part so single slash anywhere in the x path means right you can keep on traversing the dom until you find the element so you're going to chain things one after the other right and we are going to see that so anywhere in your xpath if we have used the forward slash that signifies you know to look for the element immediately inside its parent element means the previous element so a double slash in the xpath anywhere right signifies to look for any child or any grandchild element inside the the parent element or the context node okay so now in all my videos i'm going to use some of my sample control to make things clear to you all right uh, just to focus on the concept part otherwise i too can go and pick you know some complex websites like you know spicejet and amazon and you know facebook but i just want you to focus on the concept part so this is my control all right let me inspect this this is what i want to find all right so as you could see we have the html then we have body inside that we have the field set and then we have this input this is what I want to find. And if I just, and this is a Chrome browser by the way. So I'm, I've done Control F to bring in this box. So let's start with absolute XPath. So we have to say HTML, all right. Then in this is the parent and this parent has got the children body. So I'm navigating to that body part. Then inside that body, uh, they are different items in here all right they are all siblings of each other because they have a common parent so now i can 
go to this how can i go i can easily skip this because they are all at the same level a parent can go to this a parent can go to this directly right this is how it's being structured so don't take it like you know you have to come here first then here and then and no they all are at the same level because they have a common parent so now you can pick any one of your choice let's say if i want to pick this div all right so i can say and i can say div and there are three divs right as you could see so if i say first one right so i'm using the index as you could see right which is an abbreviation of position so i can also use position but that is something that we are going to cover in the upcoming video so this is the index that we are using all right if i say two so it will move to the second one if i say three right so i so you see that i'm only changing the index and this is only possible because all three divs they have the same parent okay but we have to work on field set so pretty clear what we have to do we have to say field set okay and then now what do we have to do inside the field set we have the input element okay and then let us bring that in focus once more it has got these types okay so i can use any one of these so let me use type is equal to date so if i say type is equal to date and we have to use because this is an attribute so we have to use add symbol and now you could see one on one i can easily identify this control with the help of absolute xpath however if i can just add one more div if i can wrap this field set inside a div right then it will fail so what is the solution you have to go for a, a relative xpath so all you have to do two forward slash and that's it now you are still able to identify this control all right so make sure you go for relative xpad as much as possible okay and there are a lot of uh, extensions as well which you can use uh, so on chrome you can have the crow path i've already installed crow path and i can come here and this will also show you, uh, you know, as you could see this is the relative xpath and this is the absolute xpath right you select any control on the page and it is going to generate the you know the the xpath the css selector for that right so but it, it's good to have these kind of things right uh, if you're a beginner but i always recommend that you understand the concept so that you can write your own uh, xpath right whenever it's required because uh, these tools as i mentioned that you know they all have uh, some kind of uh, system in place through which you know they are identifying the xpath so maybe you have a different tool right like this crow path and it uses different xslt uh, engine right and that will generate a different path for you because they follow a different structure to you know uh, navigate through the dom in most of the cases you know there's always somebody which established some kind of standard but we have seen that you know xpath uh, generated into one browser does not work into IE and for that matter I doesn't even have uh, you know the XPath engine in, in it so you can't write your own XPath into IE and then how does Selenium you know find controls using XPath so Selenium actually pushes its own uh, component into your IE uh, browser and that way is you know that is is no longer native so that's kind of some limitations of uh, xpath and uh, these tools that we use to identify the controls right so that's about uh, absolute and relative xpath thank you so much